Daddy shoot ready, brown incarcerated, got my people living dead in gang wars, back to back to the home is where they sent me. Dang. Let's go. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling a blessing. Like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Damn, bro, I got a crazy story a subscriber told me about when he was in the federales, in the feds, with all the big dogs. And then tomorrow, I'm going to drop the Washington State video about the Sudanians, bro. That's a good one right there, bro. Yo, stay tuned for that. Let's get into the video. With that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up, and you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. Man, now, before I get into the video, allow me to explain something to y'all. A resident is going to be an individual that is from down south, Obviously, has to program with the Sureños and the Southsiders. So, they're going to school him down, but he, he pretty much is in the bare minimum stage. Pretty much, you know, you're going to jump when we need you. If we ask you for a favor, you know, you're going to do it, which is hardly ever. Back up a Sureños play, so on and so forth. They follow the rules. That's just about it. That's what our resident does. In order to be protected, in order not to get victimized by other group segments and take advantage of, they follow under the suit umbrella. They follow the rules. They back up Sureños. Plain and simple. It's that simple. Then you got the Southsiders, you know, and the work for the Sureños. Sureños work for the Cardinales, so on and so forth. Well, and the feds, same thing, right? So in this federal penitentiary, I'm not going to stipulate which one because there's a thousand of them. The homie I'm talking to is running in the yard. Obviously, he's the Aviado at the time. Obviously, you know, he's answering to some big homies that he said were in the back that were in the hole. Now, there's a, there's a lot of homeboys on that yard from Florencia Trece. Everybody knows Florencia Trece is probably the, one of the biggest ones down there, down south in LA, if I'm not mistaken. 18th Street, there's a cup, maybe like another one. But so far, everybody's told me Florencia Trece is probably the biggest one out there. They got the most numbers because they, you got hella different neighborhoods that are, that are factions off in sections. Like this, this street could be called this street of Sureños, but it's part of the F13 clique, should I say. So the homie's on the yard conducting business and he's running the program for the Sureños. And obviously, like I said, as a member from uh, Florencia Trece who already provided this paperwork, paperwork checked out. Then a resident shows up. So the homie from Florencia goes to the homie that has the keys to the yard. He tells him, hey, bro, hey, bro, let me whack this fool. This fool told on me in my case, bro. Palabra. He told me on my case, fool, let me, let me and the homies blast him. And he, he was a dude that's been to prison multiple times. So he was all tatted back in the face, in the hand. He's all inked up, all crazy. Probably does a thousand push-ups a day. Does a lot of squats and booty scoots. Everything, bro. So, you know, he has horse thighs. He can maintain his balance. Everything. Structured up. He got the six-pack abs. Nah, I went too far. But, you know, he was a Sureño that's been locked up forever. You know, the basic image of a Sureño is just tatted up, head to toe. Done a couple of prison terms already. So, you know, he's well-educated. He's been around. People recognize his name. People recognize who he is, what he's done. And his co-defendant happened to be a resident, got caught up with him on the streets. Well, the resident finally shows up, and he has to get his paperwork checked. But before they even approach him about his paperwork, the homie from Florida is telling the homies on the yard, hey, bro, let me blast this fool he told on me, and provides his paperwork. And the homie's like, hold on, fool, before we got, we got protocol that we got to abide by protocol so now you can wait up bro let me go check out this paperwork you're not gonna do nothing and the homie's like child that fool like the paperwork's right here bro just go off my paper bro we don't need to wait for that fool let's get rid of him now you know he's pumping up the other little f13 homies that he got that are real young minded all first termers that are ready to go ready to prove something to the big homies and the homie on the yard is like nah bro you're gonna wait let me approach him let me check out his paperwork you're gonna follow protocol plain and simple so the homies are all mad bro you know the f13 homies they go back to they go about their business. They're like, damn, bro. Like, they're ready, to, they're ready to take this fool off the yard, bro. Off with his head. So the homie approaches the resident. He asks the resident, hey, bro, I need, I need to see your paperwork. The resident, his demeanor was ugly. What I mean by ugly, like, he was nervous, shaky. And he was pretty much like, hey, bro, like, hey, dispense, bro. Like, I, I don't have it right now. But I, I just want to do my time, bro. I don't want no problems, bro. I just want to just kick it. I'll follow the rules. I'll follow the protocol. I'll be there for you guys. But I just want to go home, bro, really. And the homie's like, hey, bro, that doesn't matter. Until we see your paperwork, you know, you're going to be on this yard. You're going to fall in line with the rest of us. But I need your paperwork, bro. You got two weeks to reach out to your attorney and get the paperwork. 
Now, I'm pretty sure that like some people have told me, I don't have a general understanding. Maybe y'all can explain, but uh, I think you can't go to the feds with your paperwork. So you have to have it sent in by attorney or by the courts. So they told me he has two weeks. And in those two weeks, he, when the meetings went on the yard with the Sureños, he was there. But then he would just automatically leave and go do his own program. And every time he seen the Yavero on the yard, he was kind of like avoid him, like try not to look his direction. Like he was a nervous kid, bro. A kid that got caught up with a gang member that probably put him in a predicament he didn't want to be in, got forced to do it, and ended up catching a case with a homie and caught a Fed case, and now he's in the Feds. Welcome to a world that where he doesn't know what can go on, and the Feds are a hell of a lot more dangerous than the states. So you're putting a sheep in a wolf house, and he didn't even want to be a sheep. He doesn't want to be bait. He doesn't want to be food. He doesn't want to get slaughtered. So obviously you can see why he conducted himself the way he did. He was a nervous wreck. But it made the Yavero feel like, man, dude got something to hide, bro. If he's acting real nervioso, he's always scared. He's nervous, panicky. But he did write his attorney to ask for the paperwork. Now think about it. If he told and he was actually writing the attorney for the paperwork, do you really think he told? That's the crazy part. So before he gets his paperwork, every day, the homie from F-13, from Florence, I was like, hey, bro, let me blast this fool. And the homie keeps telling him, like, bro, you're going to wait, bro. You're going to wait till I conduct my investigation, conduct my business the way it's supposed to be conducted. Or if you know what, you could do it on your own, bro, but I ain't speaking on it. I ain't saying that I gave you the palabra, the go-ahead to blast this fool. So you're on your own when you go to the back when you answer to the big dogs, bro. And he's like, come on, fool. And he's like, Charles, bro, I ain't sanctioning nothing. You do it on your own. That's on you. And I am going to tell the homies in the back that you weren't listening, that you didn't respect my palabra, that you did it on your own, that you went rogue. So you're going to have to deal with the consequences. You're going to deal with the aftermath. So obviously the dude doesn't do it. You know, obviously he falls in line with the, obviously he falls in line with the rules of the Sureño program and he goes about his way. But he's still every day for two weeks asking the Yavero to blast this fool off the yard, get rid of him. And he's telling his young homies like to be ready every day on the yard before they're ready to you're ready to kill this kid, bro. A kid, bro, who's never been to prison, don't know nothing about prison, only be became a resident for the simple fact he did a crime with an individual and is from down south. Doesn't know nothing about prison politics, period. So I do understand and I feel for this kid. So he gets the paperwork and the Yavero walks up to him and dude, this dude pretty much said he, this kid broke down in tears. Like, look, bro, I don't want no problems. I have a family, bro. I have kids at home that need me home, bro. I'll, I'll do my time. I'll stay on the yard. I'll do whatever, bro. But I really don't want no problems, bro. I really don't. And the homie's like, hey, bro, I need to see that paperwork. Palabra, bro. If you want to stay on this yard, I need to see this paperwork. And he hands him over the paperwork. Well, lo and behold, he reads the paperwork. It's the same paperwork that this Florencia Trece has, but it's opposite. What I mean by opposite is the, the residence paperwork came straight from the attorney, not even unsealed. Handed it over to the homie so the homie could open it up. And sure enough, it says that the homie from Florencia snitched on him. He couldn't believe it. But my subscribers said that he's familiar with cut and paste tactics that some people do. That it's real easy. Because he would, the, his line of business he was with on the streets, he knew a lot of people that can do that when it comes to like loans for mortgage loans and all that. You know, manipulating the bank system. So he was like, bro, I could tell. When you look at this, the, the residence paperwork and you look at this dude's paperwork, he switched the names around. He switched multiple names around in his paperwork to make it seem like everybody told on him. In reality, he told on everybody else. And I was like, Sadio? He was like, yeah, bro, I couldn't believe it. So I was like, what happened? He was like, bro, first of all, like I had to go behind his back and politic against him. He's still asking me, hey, bro, let me blast this fool. What's up? You seen the paperwork? Let me blast him. But in all actuality, he was rounding up the troops and he was showing the paperwork. Like, look, bro. The residence paperwork stipulates this fool told him. And this fool's paperwork is, is pretty much cut and paste. You can tell it's not legit. Nobody could believe their eyes. The same people he was pumping up to go on a mission with him to kill this kid, they couldn't believe what they were reading. So what happens? They wound up taking out their own homie. Their own Ranfla did. All the little F-13 youngsters that was ready to put in work, ready to maul something, ready to hurt something bad for a name and recognition in the feds, to be recognized by the big homies, blasted one of their own badly so i'm talking to my subscriber and i was like bro that's kind of scandalous bro like i'm not i never really heard of that but you know that is kind of scandalous it was like fool it was scandalous for the simple fact that imagine if i would have let this dude blast him if i would have just went off his paperwork because in reality there was nothing wrong with going off this man's paperwork he already proved it to me that this dude that this dude snitched that he told so i could have 
but proper protocols. Like I got to read this dude's paperwork too. And he goes, and it didn't surprise me when he showed, when he turned over the paperwork, like he was willing to. He goes, and the, the messed up part about it is even after we read the paperwork and seen that this F-13 gang member told on his resident, the resident still approached the Mesa. The resident still approached the, the Yavedo and was like, hey, bro, hey, like, I really don't want no problems. But he was thinking because they had to remove this Sureño for telling on him that he was probably going to get blasted. He was probably going to suffer repercussions and consequences for outing this dude out. So even the resident was like, hey, bro, go ahead and just leave him alone, bro. I don't want no problems. If you leave him alone, I could be left alone. I just want to do my time. He doesn't understand that the rules like, hey, bro, if you tell, you're gone. You're getting, you're getting your wind took. So homie got his wind took and the residents over here just nervous. Didn't roll it up off the yard, didn't leave, didn't lock it up, didn't do nothing. Hogged it out. And so they, they gave him comfort like, hey, bro, we had to take care of this. He told on you, we took care of that. And the resident got to do his time peacefully. Now imagine that. Because sometimes on the main lines and sometimes on the SNY, paperwork can be misconstrued. Paperwork can usually gets people hurt. Even on the SNY, I know some people might not believe it, but it does. I've seen people on the SNY brag about a domestic violent case that he beat his old lady up with this or he knocked his old lady out and get beat up by her cellies, get beat up by STG groups. I did it myself because a homie beat up his old lady with, a, with like a metal pole. And then he tried to show pictures of her face all messed up like, and he started laughing. Knocked him down, that easy. Well, paperwork is scrutinized. But this dude tried to manipulate the situation thinking he can get away with it. How? By the art of persuasion. Because the simple fact that he had a couple homeboys' ears, that he was able to manipulate and influence some people to further his agenda and better his and make decisions on his behalf to cover his own butt. A man can get that scandalous, bro, behind politics and have somebody else get their wind took just to cover himself. You'll be surprised how many people do that on a daily on the main line and the SNY. Dirty politics just to get somebody else out the way, get rid of somebody. So they can remain in good standings and continue to do the scandalous dealings, live by the scandalous ways and hurt other people in the process. And the thing about paperwork that trips me out the most when it comes to CDCR and in prison, I'm talking about just the states. I can't talk about the feds, but you'll be surprised, bro. Surprised how many people got removed and stabbed by their own people because the way administration wrote up the paperwork, the way IGI sometimes writes up the paperwork, the way the 115 is written up. It's a trip, bro. That paperwork sometimes can seal somebody's fate. But when the cops want to be, little, um, should I say, dicks about it? Hey, man, they just got to type a sentence a certain way to make, it, make it, assume, to make it seem like this individual did this when he didn't do that. And then people, all people just justify it's like, hey, bro, it says it right here, bro. It says it right here on the 115. That used to happen in Kern Valley. There was no cameras until they installed cameras on the yard because people were 602 and they're like, man, we're just a lack of evidence. You're going off a cop. But I got inmates to show proof and that are willing to submit alpha Davis and submit statements to prove my case. But because your cop said he's seen it and typed it up the way he did, I got found guilty. I went to the shoe for like two years. I lost all my property. I got a DA referral because they're only doing it on the basis that your, uh, your cop can identify me doing it when five different inmates can identify that I didn't do it. So they wind up installing cameras. But that paperwork is a dangerous game. If it's in black and white, if it has your name, people get hurt by it. That's not to say sometimes the penal system, the judicial system, however they write it, sometimes can be fabricated. We've all heard about dirty cops. We've all heard how, how, how dirty they can get, how scandalous they can get if they want somebody off the yard. Trust me, I've seen cops go to inmates and offer phones if they can get rid of this dude because this dude was filing a 602 and filing this, this, and that on behalf of the CO, and it was going to cause a CO investigation. Get internal affairs involved and inmates will proudly raise their hand book this fool in the cell 15 minutes come out they press the button that dude's got to go through all kinds of medical attention through those emergency transfers all of a sudden their property gets lost and that dude's just sitting right there with a phone in his hand because you know he did something for a cop or he did something because the cop said that there's paperwork on it didn't have to see it sometimes some inmates did see the paperwork. They were just told, hey, bro, I got paperwork on this fool. You guys might want to get rid of him. If you guys can get rid of him right now, you know, I bless you guys. I'll look out. And some inmates do that. Some inmates really do that. How do you think a lot of times some COs get put on the payroll? Inmates are doing favors for the COs. It's not just about money sometimes. 
So I thought I'd share that story with you guys, man. Tell me, tell me what you guys think about that story, bro. That is a scandalous story to prey on an innocent person. That yeah, maybe, well, maybe yeah. I won't say he's so innocent, but who knows what they got caught up for? Maybe that the resident was doing something he shouldn't have been doing, but he wasn't involved in the gang politics, and only to get told on by a gang member, an active gang member, told on this dude. And this dude was just like, damn, bro, like you're the gang member. I don't even live by the street code, and I kept it solid, and he didn't, and try to smug me up and get me stabbed. That could have been an innocent person's life that no longer here with us because an individual just wanted to cover his tracks, wanted to hide his skeletons in the closet. That's deep, bro, and that's a scary situation. So I wanted to share that with you guys, man. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. You only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.